The first attempt at a systematic cultivation of coffee, was undertaken by the Dutch in 1740. But it was the British, who took control of the island, in 1815, and who continued their experiments with coffee production. The British colonial administration, continued to develop coffee as a plantation crop, in the 1830s. With the decline of the West Indies production of coffee, coupled with the high demand in the European market, coffee planting increased in Ceylon. By 1860, Sri Lanka was one of the largest coffee-producing countries, along with Brazil, and Indonesia. Around 1870, disaster struck the industry, with the plantations being devastated by a fungal disease, also known as the coffee leaf rust. However, in 1824, almost 50 years before the coffee blight, tea seeds were smuggled into Ceylon, and planted at the Royal Botanical Gardens. These cultivar were developed along with additional types, from Assam, and Calcutta. In 1852, a young Scottish planter arrived in Ceylon, and so began, the story of, Ceylon tea. James Taylor, a Scotsman, was brought to Ceylon, to work for the successful coffee business. He was just 17 years at the time. After five short years his employers were so impressed, they put him in charge of an estate close to Candy, Lil Carnderer Estate. The indefatigable Scotsman, changed the landscape, which was stony and precipitous, into an exemplary plantation, one far better than the neighboring estates. Taylor also built himself an archetypal bungalow in 1865. After clearing 7.6 hectares of forest in an area called Haywerhead a Lower, he planted the first seeds. These first seeds, probably of origin from Assam, India, took root in 1860, and now is referred to as Field 7 in Lul Karn Durer. Interestingly, Taylor decided to give the estate a local name, while most estates had British names, subsequently the name of the estate was corrupted, and is now called, Luler Condora Estate. Around 1872, Taylor set about building a larger factory. He had written, I have a machine, of my own invention, made in candy, for rolling tea, which I think, will be successful. Though his first attempts at tea, were compared to poison, in 1875, he sent the first shipment of tea to the London Tea Auction, a modest 10 kilograms of manufacture. Taylor's efforts spearheaded and launched the tea industry, but large tea companies, subsequently forced him out of business. He died in 1892, a year after his dismissal, from Luler Condora estate. Today the estate and tea fields, which launched the largest export crop of Ceylon, can be viewed. The immaculate Lul Condor estate, tea gardens, also contain the artifacts of Taylor's legacy. The remains of his log cabin, of which, only the chimney has survived. A well, used by the planter, and of course the famous field, which started an industry, in which today over one million Sri Lankans, are directly, or indirectly employed. And the vantage point, of Taylor's seat, is a set of granite boulders, where he would have no doubt used, to enjoy the splendid views of mountains, and reflect at the end of a hard day's work. It should be noted, that Taylor was not the first to have planted tea, on the mountain slopes of Ceylon. But it was he, who took planting from an experimental stage, to manufacture, and then as an export crop. Taylor succeeded in developing and adapting, techniques of tea cultivation, and manufacture, suitable for the local terrain. While learning from visiting planters from Assam, and himself going to Darjeeling, he refined and improved, on the art of manufacture, of Ceylon tea. John Field, the High Commissioner for the United Kingdom, in Sri Lanka, remarked at his 100th death anniversary. It can be said of very few individuals, that their labors, have helped to shape the landscape of a country, but the beauty of the hill country, 
as it now appears, owes much to the inspiration of James Taylor, the man who introduced tea cultivation to Sri Lanka.